goal of this podcast is to help you break in and thrive in advertising. And we do that every week by sharing the stories and advice of those rocking it on the other side. This week you will learn from Brendan Shields Shimizu. Brendan is the Chief Innovation Officer at Crispin, Porter, and Bogusky. Observatory, now part of Crispin, has deep roots in entertainment and is one of Fast Company's world's most innovative companies for 2020, 2021, and 2022. Recently, Observatory and sister agencies MMI and Vitro merged under the Crispin banner to create an integrated creative powerhouse. So we will answer what's been going on with Crispin this episode. Brendan has been with Observatory by Crispin and its predecessor CAA Marketing since 2011. Throughout his career, he's worked with clients including General Motors, Diageo, Marriott, Chipotle, Nike, and Netflix, and plenty of others. He has spearheaded global creative campaigns and brand and entertainment partnerships in the creation of brand entertainment studios. So, L.A., we're going to talk about how he might, may or may not have met some celebrities, including one with a really good voice, Morgan Freeman. I think you're really going to enjoy this interesting route on how to break in the account direction specifically, but account or not, we're all going to learn. And you can learn more by heading to our Instagram, where we have Brendan's secret resources listed out just for you on our Instagram at breaking and entering pod all one word now on with the show this is the breaking and entering advertising podcast and as usual (laughs) i'm your accomplice gino schellenberger kick it mikey all right Brandon Shields, Shimizu, welcome to the Breaking you. and Entering Podcast. How are you doing today, sir? Doing pretty well. How about you? I'm doing well. Um, I'm done with my work day. You, you're probably not because uh, you're over now. My afternoon, so uh, yeah, at least a few hours left. A few more, a few more meetings, a few more Zooms for the day. Okay. Well, this should be the best one, the best meeting of the day. Love it. We'll see. Yeah. Um, Means to be seen. High bar. So you are Chief Innovation Officer at Crispin Porter Bogusky and Head of Observatory by Crispin. Is that correct, That's Brendan? That's correct. You got, you got the lengthy title. That's the one. Chief Innovation Officer. What are you innovating right now? Yeah, I mean, look, I think there's a lot of different ways to look at innovation in the world. There's There's innovation in the way that we service our clients. It's innovation in in the technology that that we're using you know be that i think ai is kind of the the hot thing right now if you'd asked me a year ago it probably would have been Isn't web that crazy metaverse um, yeah yeah it's you know but look it's all it, technology right now is just moving so fast um that it's interesting and and i think all of our clients are sitting there saying hey how do we integrate new technology into our campaigns into the way we market into the way we speak to our consumers. Um, it's fun. It's fun to get to to sit there and say, how do we do this? Are you innovating um, for Crispin and Observatory internally? Or are you also thinking about how can your clients innovate with their with their advertising? Or is it yeah. a mixture? Yeah, it's it's a mixture for sure. I think kind of the, the the third bucket of the innovation really is about thinking about how clients do marketing these days you know kind of back in the olden days it was it was television or and it was television old days yeah the the old days when there was four media mediums exactly and and you know and then it became okay let's you know like digital and then programmatic and everything else and you look at what we've been doing kind of at observatory for for many years also is is integrating the the entertainment element of it creating brand entertainment branded entertainment or or pure entertainment um and that's another avenue that that marketers can reach can reach consumers in a different way 
uh, right now. And so it is, it's, it's about how, how brands market as well and, and how they reach consumers. And that that's part of innovation too. Tell me about the entertainment aspect of this. Can you give me an example? You know, you list out programmatic, you listed out uh, digital. What do you mean by branded entertainment? Yeah. So, I mean, I think, look, you you know, long time ago, you look at like BMW films, uh, for instance, that was, you know, I think Alan that did that. uh, Don't remember. Um, I'll find that later. Yeah. um, But that was, you know, many years ago, and that was really just awesome action films um, in, in BMW vehicles. And there wasn't a whole lot of branding except the fact that it was in a BMW. And gosh, it was super cool. Um, they just came out with a new new version uh, a little while ago. Um, certainly the work that we're doing uh, with our client Nike uh, through their entertainment studio, Waffle Iron Entertainment, uh, is, is a version of that. Waffle Iron Entertainment, and if you're familiar with that story of the, the shoe literally made in a waffle iron, right? Yep. Didn't they put the, the sole? Yep. I forgot the gentleman's name that origin, originally designed yeah, that. The, the, the first, yeah, the first sole of a Nike mm-hmm. shoe was, was made on, on a waffle iron. So yeah. what are you doing with them? Yeah, so I mean, that's, that's you know, we are we are making pure entertainment with them. Their, their first film that came out was called The Day Sport Stood Still. Uh, aired on on HBO uh, about two years ago at this point, and and Nike was a producer on that. It was incredible a documentary about you know the day sports stood still, the beginning of COVID, and and when you get documentaries, the other thing is that you don't totally know what's going to happen. So that was set out to be uh, a documentary film that was going to follow kind of COVID, and then it really transformed into social justice as well around around. George Floyd murder and Black Lives Matter movement. Um, yeah. That was co-produced with uh, Imagine Entertainment, uh, Ron Howard and Brian Grazer's company and, and Chris Paul's production company. Um, so that's that's a version of of marketing out there. You look at what Patagonia is doing. They're making, you know, films that are kind of really about, you know, the earth and, and sustainability. And that's a type of marketing that Patagonia is doing there. I love it. So... That's then when we talk about entertainment, that's kind of the purest form of entertainment with really no branding, no, you know, product placement. Um, Certainly branded entertainment is 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 also another thing where there is some product placement. It is a bit closer to the brand. You know, it maybe looks a little bit more like an ad, but it's something that's entertaining. It's something that consumers are really seeking out and saying, you know what, I don't, I don't actually care that this is funded by a brand because it's fun. It's entertaining. It's cool. Um, it's, you might learn something. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So thank um, you for clarifying that. I think that's the thing that, and I know you have a a history in entertainment, which we'll get to, which kind of makes sense. And in provides credibility to what you're talking about. So we'll definitely dive into that. Before we do though, I still I still want to get a lay of the land with the agency. So you got Crispin and Observatory. Um what's going on in that world of those two separate agencies? Can you give me the lay of the land and help our audience understand the difference between the two? Yeah, it's a it's a great question. Um and so just about about a month ago Now, we announced uh, a merger of four different agencies coming under the Crispin banner. So Observatory, uh, an agency uh, called MMI, uh, which is really a media agency and influencer marketing agency. Uh, Another agency called Vitro, which is a regional creative powerhouse down in Southern California. And the venerable, well-known Crispin Porter Bogusky. Um, So all of us are, are now under the Crispin banner really coming together um, as as one entity, Observatory by Crispin is going to remain a, a division of Crispin, uh, really focusing on the the entertainment, the content work that that we do that we're that really we're right. really well known for. Um, but and 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 look, the, the reasoning for this was, you know, all four of the agencies were doing great as as individual agencies, but um, we we saw that our clients were asking for more integrated offerings. They were asking and wanting places that had some media in-house, had influencers in-house. They didn't want to have to manage three different agencies, a media agency and a creative agency 
and a performance agency and a, you know, something else agency. And so right, right. by bringing all the complementary services together, we've, we've really just done something that our clients have been asking for. Um, and, mm-hmm. and, you know, we've, a lot of the other, a lot of these agencies have been working together as sister agencies and as partners for, for many years. And so this just kind of formalizes a bit more of that, of that partnership. Um, That's what I was curious about. What mm-hmm. was the state of the game, the nature of these? What was the relationship with these agencies before? Were they completely independent? Were they a part of a larger holding company? Gave me the rundown before this, uh, before yeah. a, a month ago. Yeah. So all of us um, are or, or were still are part of Stagwell. Uh, Stagwell, which is, got it. Which is, you know, marketing services holding company out there. Yep. Yep. Uh, so we were all sister agencies very much, you know, working together. Uh, um, and, gotcha. and so this just kind of brought them brought them more together. Um, and, and Stagwell really touts, you know, collaboration amongst its agencies. The, the idea is that, you know, we're not a big, huge network that's bloated and has lots and lots of layers. It's very much about saying, listen, we've got so many different things that we can do within Stagwell. We know each other. We know how to work with each other. Like, so let's get the best for, for our clients by, by working together. Totally. So now what are like what will it look like in the next four or five months, six months from now? What do you vision? Yeah, I mean, I think that um we're we're gonna be doing a lot of the the same stuff that we're doing. Um we're not it's not like any of our clients are going away, all of our people are staying. Um, but I think that this is going to allow all of us to to play on a bigger field. Um, it's, it's going to allow us to, to win bigger clients, uh, and to, and to frankly have more offerings that we can, that we can give to our clients. And, uh, you know, I can sit there and say like, when we're doing a creative campaign, it's much easier if I can walk down the hall and talk to the influencer marketing team and be like, Hey, here's the idea. Like, help me layer on influencers into this big creative idea, as opposed to, you know, having to go to another agency to do that. Um, Absolutely. Same, same is true with, with media, right? You know, like I believe that media should be driven by, by the creative. Like we shouldn't just have a one size fits all. Definitely media. should be integrated. Yeah. yeah, it should be integrated. And so all those things just allow us to do things more seamlessly um, and, and just offer our clients better, better services and, and better opportunities. Are you able to speak on some of the clients that you have? Um, sure. I mean, I think that you know there there's a lot of um, a lot of good clients across across the the portfolio. Um, you know, within the Christmas portfolio, we've got Dropbox, um, which nice. is certainly you know well known. Buchanan Scotch, um, which you know everyone's got to have a nice a nice Scotch in there, right? Um, Procter and Gamble uh, has been, been a long time client. Um, Nineteen Crimes Wine. Uh, Snoop Dogg's is- on that one. Yes, Snoop Dogg and Martha. Um, yeah, okay, I, I wanted to make sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because uh, you know, and there, great branding on that. I mean, I don't know what the, I don't know if you do the package design or label design, but you know, all all around the brand itself is so well recognized. It, it, it's the only wine bottle that catches my eye. Yeah, I love that you say that. I mean, it's 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 that brand is a lot of fun to work on, and I think those clients are also, you know, with, with Snoop Dogg uh, and with Martha, like they're not afraid to, you know, do something that's a little edgy, do something that's a little different because that's what that brand is about. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and so, you know, they've been great clients for about three years now that, that nice. we've worked with them and, and, you know, number of campaigns in with them. Um, and just really excited for, we got another campaign coming out uh, probably, later this summer uh which which will be super exciting so i can't uh, wait yeah i have to wait to see that cool um all right so give me a rundown now we know some of your clients so i guess like i guess to our our audience out there i want to keep them in mind they're aspiring advertisers where are your offices at you know how like do they come and like intern there what's the value add why why entertain this? The, why entertain Crispin as their first agency? Yeah, choice? yeah. So 
All great questions. Um, I'm based in Los Angeles. Um, and so, you know, we've got about uh, 60 of us here in LA uh, with the new Crispin. Uh, we're going to be headquartered in Los Angeles and New York. So we've got a big presence uh, at One World Trade in New York. Uh, and then also we'll have a, a headquarters in Houston as well. Um, obviously, kind of during during the pandemic, uh, we've had, you know, some people that that were hired remotely or that have moved away. And so we've also got people working, working remotely, of course, um, of course. which, you know, that's true with everyone. And, and we've made it work, luckily. Um, so so we're doing that, too. Um, we um, we don't have an internship program right now. Um, I definitely think it's something that we've done it in the past for sure. And it's something that's really important to us of kind of cultivating that next that next layer of talent and, and, and really, you know, showing them what's possible in this world. So it's definitely something that that's on our radar that, you know, we probably want to want to look at for, for next year, especially as, as the newer, the newer Crispin here. Yeah. I hear you. Um, what's going on in Houston? Houston uh, is a cool city. Uh, yeah, it's a great city. Um, I was down there a couple weeks ago. I stayed What's at a hotel the... with a giant Texas-sized lazy river. It was awesome. Okay, now we're yep. talking. Yep. What's the value add? What's the reason for Houston office? Yeah, so which client? Uh, Houston. It, it's it's actually not specific for a client uh, based there. Okay. Uh, although we've had some clients there, it just sure. it's it's a it's a great city. Uh, that we've got, we've got a number of people that are down there. It's, it's where, um, MMI, uh, was, was headquartered prior to the, the Crispin merger. And so there's, there's just people down there from that. There you go. I've never been, I'm going to check it out. Check it out. Good, good food scene. Super cool. Went to a baseball game. Got all the things. (laughs) And their baseball team, we won't talk about in this podcast, yeah. being from Chicago here. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, Brendan, uh, and talking about the agency. We'll get back to it. We're going we're gonna to throw it back now. When was that moment in your life when young Brendan was like, I want to make ads for a living? Walk me through that. Yeah. It's a great question. I mean, I, I, I actually don't know if I've ever said to myself, I want to make ads for a living or I want to sell insurance. Yeah. I mean, I, I you know, let me, let me, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the, the little, little bit of the story here. So um, I was a theater major in, in college theater stage management major. Um, it was a passion nice. for sure. Like it was that thing that I did through middle school, high school. Where'd you go to college? I went to USC university of Southern California here in Los Angeles. Great. Um, great arts program i'm I'm sure good, yeah good arts program good football team as well and um, you guys just got brawny lebron's son mm-hmm, exactly exactly um he's committed so, there to play basketball so continue yeah. sorry so, so no. you you grew up loving theater life the backstage you said stage management right yeah so you weren't on stage correct correct okay. I really liked kind of that operational side of things and just really? like making it happen. That, um, that I was in theater in high school. That's 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 hard stuff. It's, it's stressful. There's it, nothing like it. You yeah, know, being on time, making sure everything's operating smoothly, and yeah, that's that's tough stuff. I got to turn the lights on so that people can see. You know, it's oh, it's, there's so much to it. <laughs> there's so much to it. But um, yeah, but I, you know, I kind of got like halfway through college and. um I just, I just, that passion for theater as like the extra thing that I did wasn't translating particularly well to me seeing myself doing this as my job forever and ever. Um, And so look, that's part of, that's what college is to figure out, right? That's, and and, you know, what many people figure out early on in their career too. So, um, so I kind of talked to a number of different advisors there and I, I still kind of wanted to do something in the arts and the entertainment space, USC being in Los Angeles, lots of film and TV. And so uh, a lot of people looked at me and said, listen, go work at a talent agency for like a year, a year and a half, because in Hollywood, like all roads lead to talent agencies in sh- some way, shape or form. So that's a great jumping off point for If you want to go to a studio or production company, you want to go be a producer, like whatever it is that you want to do, that'll get you a good view. Um, I'm I'm learning. 
I, I think this is so interesting because the LA that that culture to me and the entertainment route in Hollywood, I'm so foreign to that that I'm I want to learn more. So what was next then? Yeah, and so you know I went to be an assistant at at a Hollywood talent agency. What, what does that mean to me for me? Because so, I'm Chicago. I've never been yeah, over there. So like if you've ever if you've seen the TV show or movie Entourage, like. Mm-hmm. That's basically what a talent agency is. You got like Ari Gold and, and you know, Lloyd. Um, yeah. But like the assistant really is, it's the gatekeeper to the agent. It's it's the right hand, the left hand of that agent. You are, you are doing everything from answering the phone to going out to shoots with clients, to identifying new talent, to looking at contracts, to scheduling travel. Like it's, it's the jack of all trades and, and the word no, or I can't figure out how to do this. Like, it's just not a thing in, in Hollywood talent agencies. So it's it super hard to get into like into that role. Yeah. I mean, look, it's, it's, it's tough, but there's routes in for sure. Sure. Um, and How'd you get into it? Do you knew somebody you had, exp- not, you know, you have an internship. What was I, had that a, I had an internship. I had an internship at both a, a smaller talent agency and also a record label. Um, and so when I was kind of coming out of college, um, look, some of it's just luck, right? Like I, sure. I got lucky. I just not like I necessarily knew someone like I applied and had a number of interviews and, and got lucky. Is there like um, one or two, like the best talent agencies, you know, that everybody wants? I just, I'm just very yeah. curious. So the, what, the two that I worked at was William Morris, which is now William Morris Endeavor or WME, um, and also Creative Artist Agency, CAA. Um, so I spent, I spent eight years at CAA, so I am partial to, to them. They, they were very good for my career and, and for my growth. Spent eight years there. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah is it like um, tortuous torturous like, no it was, was it was good benefit like yeah it was i'm trying great. to understand like this is different than advertising agencies right because i know you can get worked in some shops in advertising agencies yeah. and people want to get out yep and yeah. I, i'm assuming the same for some talent agencies for Probably sure pretty I similar. Mean, it's 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 long hours for sure you know it's but i i am a firm believer that you know especially at the beginning of your career, like you got to work hard. You got to, yeah. you got to be hungry. You got to, you got to go out there and like, and, and grab stuff. Um, I've had some guests afraid to say that. Yeah. It's okay. crazy. Cause like the anti like work hard, like the hustle culture, I get that. You don't want to like overstress yourself, but yeah, you got to work hard. I, I'm a firm believer. I, I, I think you should show up every day. If you have a hybrid option personally, whether or not people are there, I think you should be the first one in. I think you should be one of the, Last one's to leave. Like, yeah. sorry. Yeah. That's my, that's my, not, that's not Brendan's view, but for your yeah. first one or two years, that's how you get to know people. Yep. And yeah, I'm look, sure it's the same for talent agency. It's the same thing with an advertising yeah. agency. Like, why not? Yeah. And, and I agree with that. And I don't, I don't think it needs to be like a, you know, you can't have a work life balance. Like, I don't think that means that, you know, you can't take vacation. But it's, you know, be present when you are working and, and, you know, work hard. And for me, I was always the one that, you know, someone comes around and says, hey, we have this extra project that we need help with or something. Yeah, whatever you need. Um, yeah. yeah, because it was like, hey, this exposure to my boss's boss or exposure mm-hmm. to someone else who might, who might help me. And so, you there know, is- I have a friend in investment banking. He was not allowed to take one PTO day his first year. Yeah, that's and with yeah. 80 hours, you know, 60 to 80 hours. Like, geez. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's also probably getting paid a lot of money, but that's, regardless. That's true. Yeah, that's true. I, I wouldn't trade my life for an inv- investment banker's life. Though. I agree. I agree. <laughs> and so you did this for eight years. <clears throat> What is it setting you up for? Are you yeah. planning on, are you going to be agency life forever? This talent agent, did you get caught in that cycle where you're like, I'm doing this, I'm leveling up, I'm sure. I'm yeah. loving these opportunities. I'm staying, or do you want to branch out eventually? Well, okay, so so here's what happened for me. So I went to the first agency. I was only there for like two years, actually. Um, and um, and then uh, I was laid off from that job because it was economic downturn and that's what happens. Um, went and found a few other little, little odd jobs, 
um, and kind of set realized to myself, I was like, I don't think I want to be a talent agent uh, or working at a talent agency, like in an agent capacity for, for my career. I was like, the entertainment world is like, it's great. It's amazing, but it's also a little crazy. How many celebrities uh, do you mean? I mean, you lose track. Um, Anybody stick out? Um, nice, super nice, nicer than you would imagine. Many people stick out. Um, who sticks I, out for the wrong reasons? Uh, oh no, we're not. We're not. Okay. not going I have there. to try. I have to try. Or there's some NDA that I've signed that. Uh, that, well, that can really you give us anything? Out. Any celebrity fun stories? Yeah, legal? Would, no NDAs. I think that um, the 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 celebs who are the nice ones and just the down to earth ones are those are the ones that that you know make make it in this world. Like I can tell you that. Um, I had a meeting at one point with Danny DeVito. Um, he was, he was trying to go do something with a brand. Um, and oftentimes folks like that will send in, you know, their right hand or their assistant or their chief of staff or something. Um, and he and his wife came in and sat down and were just like, this, this is what we're hoping to do. Um, and it was just a very real conversation of them saying, listen, we're not sure how to go do this. Like we need a little help. We need a little expertise. And that was just really refreshing because you're like, gosh, like this is Danny DeVito, like one of the all time greats coming in to, to ask some advice, himself, being yeah. honest and being humble and, you Ooh. know, getting help. And that's yeah. amazing. Um, no, not a lot of help with him. It seemed like, right. It was just him and his wife. It's incredible. Yeah. yeah it was you got great. another one like that? You know, I think um, I think the 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 other time that just sticks out to me um, is I was at an event um, and Morgan Freeman was there, um, and you know he's obviously big, huge, you know, well known actor, and and I just simply wanted to meet him, and so I walked up to him and I said, you know, Mr. Freeman, I'm I'm a trainee at at Creative Arts Agency, and I just want to say I enjoyed your speaking panel. Uh, 20 minutes ago and he was incredibly pleasant and sat there and asked about me asked about my experience at CAA um, asked if I knew his agent at CAA and and you know it was just very real like it wasn't who are you why are you talking to me it was like yeah just normal conversation um, incredible so celebs are normal people too yeah yeah <laughs> yeah of course um, yeah so back to the story then so you you did some odd jobs you said and what happened there yeah in, into the next talent agency job so and the next talent agency job i went to creative artist agency to caa um but specifically to caa marketing which was the brand entertainment division of creative artist agency which then became observatory um so ah, now we're connecting the dots here yeah, that's how we're connecting all the dots and so that that division of caa was very much about sitting there saying, listen, how do we take brands and market them through entertainment, through film, through television, through through celebrity? How are we creating films? Um, so we, you know, some of our most iconic work was the work we did for Chipotle. Love um, that one. With many of the stop animation films. Yeah, those little guys, those little toy guys exactly. in the... Exactly. The, the farm gets... The guy goes to college, right? Yep, and that that was that was the newest one that we just yeah. did uh, about about a year and a half ago. That was called "A Future Begins." That was beautiful. Um, the future begins. Beautiful. Chipotle, YouTube. It. It's beautiful. It's like what five minutes? Uh, it's only two and a half minutes. Two minutes. It's great. Yeah, yeah. I enjoyed um, that. I remember that last year. Yeah. Yeah, but that's that's the type of work that that we were doing at at CAA marketing and also a lot of just more entertainment consulting of saying hey like brand how should you be interacting with with the entertainment space um how making brands smarter about how they buy media in the upfront so saying listen here's the tv shows that are kind of the buzzed tv shows to talk about this year um and that's honestly that 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 was perfect for me because it was a perfect marriage of crazy entertainment with marketing, advertising, like actual KPIs and metrics that that you needed to hit. Um, and and I, I I also got I got lucky um, there in that I worked for seven years on the General Motors business. 
um, and for about nine years on the Diageo business. And, you know, I think that with with anyone in the advertising industry, it's like working on a car brand like that's that's tough work. And you can really cut your teeth there. And that that experience uh, working on GM and working on Diageo really um, kind of helped me grow uh, and figure out how to work within the agency sphere. The ad how long ago was that? Um couple years ago, th three, four years ago, um, gotcha. I spent a good amount of time working on those. Um, See here, managing director and head of brand team. And yep. then you got elevated to president and chief operating officer full time not too long ago. Correct. Yes. I've had a lot of titles right. along the way. That's, a, that's a, Yeah. I mean, you're moving up and now you're the yeah. chief innovation officer. So you were at observatory then for five years and four months, according to LinkedIn. That sounds right. Yeah. And, um, and then you, then you went all in on this sort of branded entertainment marketing advertising route. Correct. Correct. Um, and you loved it. And, look, and I was like on the client service side of things, um, account management side of things. I, I also think that's another thing that at CAA, like, Oh the, yeah, this golden, it's, it yeah. sounds like a perfect, you were doing all that all the time already. Like account exactly. service liaising, mm -hmm. like understanding clients, and that that's yep. a perfect. That's a good. That's a good route for aspiring account managers in advertising, and I yeah. never recommended that. And so that's yeah. going to be in my my background for people that are that are interested. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's definitely it's it's. Look, I think that um, it's been a lot of fun along the way, and you Sounds know, like my meeting my, Morgan my, Freeman. Exactly. You know, and, and I think my my colleague, my chief creative officer here, Linda Knight, like she always she always looks at me and says, listen, advertising should be a fun industry. Like we should be working on fun campaigns and we should we should want to come into work every day because, um, you know, otherwise, what's what's the point? Um, yeah, and, it's great uh, to remind ourselves that we are in the uh, amazing industry. We're creating fun, entertaining content. There's no other careers like it. So I think that's a great reminder. And we get to stress, you know, yeah. day to day is stressful. We're servicing other companies. We're at their, you know, request. So it's good to remind ourselves that we're, we're getting paid to think outside the box and think differently. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and especially here at, at Observatory, it's, you know, we're, we're kind of hybrid entertainment and advertising. And, right. and so like, we really think differently, like we really think big, you know, what, what oftentimes is kind of the, the back of the deck, the extra idea that you see from, from other places, like that's all of our ideas, mm -hmm. um, which is scary sometimes, but um, incredible. yeah, but it's, it's a lot of fun too. And then that pretty much brings us back to, I know it was very abridged, so I, we can, yeah. I'm sure. So we I definitely want to get listeners to reach out to you. We'll get to that. But that brings us back to, you know, you know, you get, you got elevated as CEO of observatory. And then you now are now the chief innovation officer at Crispin Porter Bogusky, this larger, I don't know if merge is legal term here, but the, joining of the the four agencies you're overseeing all the innovation of of those four yep correct that. incredible and you've been doing that for just about two months just so. about two months yeah yeah and so it's still early days still you know we're all still figuring it out um of course but, yeah um, but yeah what's the biggest next thing you want to get done like what's like a big next step goal that you're, that you're really question. working towards yeah, I think that um look the the world of artificial intelligence right now is certainly the buzzy thing out there and I think that it's going to transform the way that we all do our jobs, the way that we interact with customers, the way that we interact with clients and I think that um figuring out how to do that in a responsible way um is 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 a big thing that we need to look at and also looking at ai and saying listen how how can this be additive to everything that we do right now as opposed to duplicative um because i don't i don't think that look it's still artificial like and it's you know 
copywriter's job is not going away tomorrow. Designer's job is not going away tomorrow. It's about how can we use these things to to really help and augment and and hopefully make our our work better or maybe our jobs easier. Right. Um, to help craft to help craft a bigger idea mm -hmm. where creatives could be thinking more about the bigger idea. And then if there are systems in place that can help execute faster. Yeah. Comps are a big one. I know that a lot of agencies will do is like they'll generate a comp instead of, you know, spending 10 hours making something for us a, a deck. Yeah. So there's yeah, definitely which, ways. It saves time. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It can save time. But again, to your point, it, it allows people to spend time doing other things on oh, yeah. bigger idea creation or frankly, working on more clients. Yeah, um, exactly. You know, and um, it was interesting. I, I was talking to a programmer, computer programmer the other day, and he was saying that, you know, AI is not really going to ever exactly replace um, what he's doing. But but he said, listen, he's like, I use it a lot when I get stuck. He's like, I have times that I'm like, I can't figure out what's broken. And, and so sometimes it's just that little thing that's like, ah, it just helped me over this little hurdle. And now yeah. I can keep doing my job. Absolutely. Um, Keeps Which, it running. Yeah. There's definitely. nothing like it. I'm I'm for it. So yeah. Brenda, I'm curious now. I know you have a different uh career background start talent talent agency wise, but if you were to go straight into advertising, knowing what you know now, mm -hmm. what would you tell your younger self or tell the listeners? Because I'm sure you don't want to change anything about your career and it was all perfect. Uh, yeah. But what advice do you have an aspiring advertiser right now as they're entering this field? They want to take a similar track as you. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, again, from from the client service side of things, like I think it's really important for junior folks to be asking questions, um, making sure that they understand why certain decisions are being made. Um, ask their colleagues, you know, ask their bosses, don't be afraid to show a little weakness that you don't know something because by asking you're, you're just going to make yourself better in, 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 in the way that you grow. Um, and look, as, as we talked about earlier, it's like volunteer to do things, take things on, um, and, and sit there and, and stretch yourself a little bit. Um, I also think sometimes, a lot of us in this world can get very siloed in the place that we are working. You know, we work on performance marketing, we work on big C creative, we work on media, we work on, you know, whatever experiential. Um, and we fail to think about everything else that's being done out there. Um, and I think that it's important. We all as marketers, as advertisers need to understand every aspect of our clients' advertising and marketing mix so that we can figure out, like, how do those things link together? Like, why does it make, why does this make sense? Why does that make sense? And so for, for anyone kind of junior getting into this world, like, take the time to understand, like, what that other agency is doing over there and why they're doing it. And, and again, don't be afraid to ask your bosses or your colleagues uh, or mentors questions. Um, Cause I, 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 look, I've had a lot of folks who've, who've grown up under me and like, I love it when people walk in and they're like, I don't understand why, like we're doing this. Can you help me? And I think it's incumbent on all of us who, who are more senior in our, in our careers to, to, to give it back to to yeah. everyone because because eventually those people are going to be going to be better at their jobs frankly it might even make my job easier because they're having the tough conversation with the client like um yeah so I don't know, that, that was a bit of a rambling answer but no, i hear you i appreciate it and it's a great answer um my other question now is how can people reach out to you if they have other questions um where can they find you what do you prefer yeah you can you can find me on linkedin perfect and then i'll link that in the show notes yeah well brendan that is all i got you did a fantastic job i'm excited to see what the new crispin uh this newly formed crispin is up to and i'm sure we will see that new 19 crimes potentially new brand campaign or whatever it might be in the future and then some other great work that you alluded to yeah, definitely all right brendan thank you so much thanks gino 
Thank you for tuning in to Breaking and Entering. We want to be transparent with our valued listeners, so we'd like to disclose that this episode was made possible through a paid collaboration. The funds from this collaboration were used to produce this episode and contribute to the growth and enhancement of our show. At Breaking and Entering, we are committed to delivering high-quality content that informs, entertains, and engages our audience. We carefully select our partners to ensure that any sponsored or paid content aligns with the values and interests of our listeners. Rest assured that while this episode is a result of a paid collaboration, our opinions and creative control over the content remain independent and, of course, authentic. We prioritize providing valuable insights and experiences to our audience regardless of any paid partnerships. And we greatly appreciate the support of our sponsors and partners as they play a vital role in helping us bring content to your ears. If you have any questions about our partnerships or this disclosure, please do not hesitate to reach out to us at Gino, G-E-N-O, at breakenterpod.com. Thank you.